Hello and welcome to a special bonus episode of Dropping the Hammer with Dan McFadden. I'm Dan McFadden, NASCAR reporter for FrontStretch.com and SpeedSport.com. On um, this week's episode, I bring you an interview with NASCAR Xfinity Series driver Austin Hill, whose full-time job is driving the number 21 Chevrolet for Richard Childress Racing. But a couple weeks ago, he got to drive the number 33 in his NASCAR Cup Series debut, which he made at Michigan International Speedway. Uh, as far as I know, this was the first time Austin's actually talked about what his experience was like in his first NASCAR Cup Series race, in which he finished 18th, I believe. Um, so we, we talk about what it was like at Michigan, uh, his racing origins, per se, um, him missing basketball games for his middle school bas middle school basketball team because he, he would rather have watched a NASCAR Cup Series race. Uh, he said that that happened a couple of times. Um, and we, we talk, look forward to this weekend at Watkins, Watkins Glen International uh, where Hill won a NASCAR Camping World Truck Series race last year. Uh, so far this year, Hills won twice in the Xfinity Series at the season opener at Daytona, and then at his home track of Atlanta Motor Speedway, which we also talk about how big a deal that was for him. Uh, and so he's going to try and get his first Xfinity, Xfinity Series win on a non-Super Speedway track this weekend. And he has a really good shot at it. He's really, really good at uh, road courses this year. And uh, he's really been just very, very consistent all year. Uh, I believe he's finished in the top 10 in the last eight races, I believe. So anyway, here is my interview with NASCAR Xfinity Series driver, Austin Hill. I'm dropping the hammer. No, you're not. Hello. What's going on, man? Hey, how are you doing? Doing good. Um, is this is this just? Are you just getting the recording or the audio from this, or is yes. it? Uh, okay. Yeah. All right. Just making sure. Didn't know if I needed to have some type of sponsor deal on. <laughs> so what, what's up with? So l l last time I talked to you was on the the starting grid at, at Michigan on Sunday. Um, then. I, I I told you not to d d disappear on me after the race because I wanted to talk to you. Then you disappeared, so I didn't get the chance get the chance to talk to you after your first cup start. So, uh, so what, what was it like, man? What was your first NASCAR Cup Series race like? Well, it was interesting to say the least. Um, you know, it actually I was thinking the race was going to be longer than what it was. Oh, um, really. Yeah, I mean, it seemed like seemed like the race ended fairly quickly. I, I don't know how long the race ended up being. I think it was like a little over three hours, right at three hours or something. So, um, you know, I was thinking it was going to be like a four-hour ordeal. Uh, <laughs> it was going to be a long race. So I was trying to be as prepared for it as I could. Um, you know, running the Xfinity race the day before, had to do a lot of rehydrating and get ready for it. And I felt like I was prepared really well. Um, throughout the race, you know, I started off just kind of just trying to figure the car out, figure out where the tire limit was. And, you know, you've seen time and time again, uh, all the guys in the cup series for the most part have had issues with where they get loose and then they kind of overcorrect and it's very easy to overcorrect those cars and, and you kind of get on the left rear and next thing you know, you end up in the fence. So I was trying to not do that. Uh, my number <laughs> one goal going into the weekend was to finish all the laps and we accomplished that and I learned a lot throughout the race with just how how much dirty air affected the car the way the front ends felt the, the rear of the car felt and I think if I do get the opportunity again to run in in the cup series uh, down the road hopefully that I can take what I learned and kind of maximize the opportunity the next time because I felt like I probably drove a little bit on the cautious side for the majority of the race. So the last thing I wanted to do was go out there and, and take out, say, uh, Martin Truex Jr. or somebody like that that's trying to make it in on yeah. points. And, you know, I didn't want to be that guy. So uh, I kind of – I probably drove on the, you know, easier side and, and not 
pushed it to the full potential that I could have, but we, we ended up with a solid finish out of it. We stayed out of all the wrecks and all the issues and, you know, came home with a top 20. And um, honestly, I, I was happy with that. I wasn't expecting to go out there and run top five or anything like that. I was just <laughs> expecting to make all the laps. So we were able to do that. And if the opportunity presents itself again, um, you know, I'll, I'll have a lot more confidence going into the, the weekend. So you, you, you did finish 18th. So was that, did, it, did that, that exceed your expectations? I mean, I, I thought the, I thought a top 20 was reasonable. Um, <laughs> you know, I didn't really have a, I didn't really have a number going into it to say like, man, I, I got to finish top 20. I got to finish top 15 or, you know, I got to finish this or that. Um, I just figured as long as we made all the laps, stayed out of all the mess and, and kept a clean car that we would have a shot at, at running inside the top 20, but I didn't know what that number was going to be, you know, and, and if I, if I would have finished 28th, then I would have finished 28th. I wouldn't have been upset about it. Yeah. Uh, you know, after the race, you always go back and you're like, man, if I would have done this, this, and this on a restart, or if I would have done, you know, figured this out a little sooner, uh, you know, you, you could have had a top 15 day. So you, as a racer, you always, think about what you did wrong throughout the race that might have caused you to, to not finish a little bit better and maybe possibly finish inside the top 15 there. But um, I thought it was a, a good effort for, for everyone involved with RCR, uh, with Bennett, and it, with it being my first race, uh, I was pretty pretty pleased with it. So after after the Xfinity race, I, I talked to you, and you, you described your first time in the cup car as breathtaking. So – what what's the word you would have used to describe it after the Sunday race? I I feel like so I feel like you know with the Xfinity cars like when you're in the Xfinity series, if you restart you know say twenty fifth or whatever it is thirtieth and you restart around that area on an Xfinity car, you can kind of drive up through the field fairly fairly easy um for the most part guys will give you give you a lot of room they give you a lot of space and not saying that they're not going to race you hard but they're still they're going to give you some room and things like that the biggest thing i can take away from running the cup race sunday was it doesn't matter if you're in first or if you're in 36 the guy that's in 35th right in front of you is racing just as hard like it's for the lead so i thought that that was interesting that the, that's something that I kind of took from that after the, the race was, man, these guys just, they, they race hard from lap one to lap 200. And it doesn't matter what position you're in, what place you're in they're They're fighting for that spot. Like it's the last lap and like, it's uh, like it's for the win. So I thought that was interesting. That's like one of the big things I took away. It was still, it was still breathtaking just being able to, race on Sunday. I mean, it's something mm -hmm. that you always dream about as a kid and to be able to finally do it was, was really special. Um, it was, it was a lot of fun. Like, I, I mean, I had, I had a ton of fun out there and, and there was a lot of things I learned and there was things that they were doing on the racetrack. And like, you know, if, if you got to run on them, then they'd try to run the line that you're running to dirty your air and things like that. So like all the, all the stuff I'm talking about, we normally would do on a normal given uh weekend in the Xfinity series but that's kind of more towards the top 10 top 15 area whereas on the cup side it's from first all the way to 38th it doesn't matter what <laughs> spot you're in so I thought that was really interesting so when did I know you, you said uh the conversation about that that race you know started with you and RCR a few months back like so what was like the initial conversation like for you saying hey we want to do this cup race like when was it uh i don't know the exact date or nothing but i know early in the year it was probably heck i don't know maybe may or something like okay. that maybe april maybe april uh talks started going around that we were gonna that we were gonna do something and um you know i didn't oh sorry <laughs> uh, I didn't really didn't really know when it was going to be. I didn't know what track it was going to be at, anything like that. And we still needed to figure out sponsorship. You know who was going to do it, and we knew that that Bennett was was pretty 
high on the list of wanting to do a cup race. Um, and then we reached out to our other sponsors and, and was able to get, you know, United Rentals and Global Industrial. Uh, we had Realtree on the, on the car, guys like that, or uh, sponsors like that to where we made the whole deal come together and work. So we knew about it for, I mean, we knew that it was probably going to happen for the last three or four months, just okay. didn't know exactly where. And um, was, yeah, yeah, we were able to put it all together and, and, and go do the deal and, and hopefully be able to do it again. I just, I don't know when that would be. Uh, if it's going to happen again, we actually haven't really, we haven't talked about anything else besides the, the one Michigan race. So um, obviously it all comes down to, to sponsorship. It comes down to partners and, and things like that. So there's a lot that goes into it uh, to make, make the deal happen. So, so, so during the race, like what was like the most, I guess, surreal moment for you like during those like what was your oh wow I'm, I'm in a cup series race moment probably when I like restarted I don't remember what I restarted but I restarted up front somewhere I restarted I think like 11th or something yeah yeah like, I, was, I think the, the final restart yeah I think so I was in like the hornet's nest and our car well I'm sure that a lot of it was just me figuring the car out but on the restart, for whatever reason, we were be we were way tighter on a restart than we would be throughout a run. So, man, I'm trying to work the tires in as best as I can, and you know, get ready to go on this restart. And felt like I got a good, a pretty good restart. And then we kind of get into turn one and two, and and I come off of two, and I'm like, all right, well, we're pretty good here. And then I get into three, and man, I got arrow tight behind somebody. And next thing you know, there was a swarm of them coming from both directions, <laughs> left side and right side. I was getting passed by everybody, and and I, I just thought it was a, I don't know if you call it a surreal moment, but it was a interesting moment to say the least. It was kind of one of those eye opening moments where it's like, man, if you mess up just a little bit, there's like eight guys coming from behind you that are going to be driving by you uh, like you're sitting still. So <laughs> it was definitely a uh, interesting time for me when I had that restart and I got tight and, and how many guys just kind of pounced on that seeing that you were struggling. If I remember right, you kind of like barely avoided that one big wreck that took out like Kyle Busch and Austin Cindric. Like I remember seeing you, your car like kind of dart across the bottom of the screen to, on a replay. Yeah. Like, oh, wow, he got through that. Good for him. <laughs> yeah. So we, uh, I didn't actually get a great restart there. Um, I actually, my restart was like so so. I kind of lost a car length or so, and I go off into turn one and I see that. The guy, I, I don't remember who it was. Somebody gets loose, like, really, really uh, far up front. And so I go ahead and start lifting because I, I didn't have very many cars behind me at that time. And um, I go to the bottom, and I see, like, all the cars kind of coming down the racetrack towards me. So I just gassed up. And I'm like, man, I hope I make it through it. Somebody's either going to hit me in the right rear and send me towards the fence or we're going to make it. And uh, We were lucky enough to kind of make it through there. and Didn't really have any damage or nothing like that. Uh, the only damage we had really all race long was the first pit stop being that far back um, coming down pit road. You have guys that are entering pit road and, and leaving pit road. And one of the guys in front of me, I don't know what they, he was doing, but he checked up really hard. I don't know if he was missing his stall or what. And I ran into the back of him and mm. got a little bit of damage on the front end that kind of hindered us for the rest of the race. It, it made the car even tighter. So, um, that was really the only damage we had. So I was pretty happy with us missing that big wreck. And then, uh, you know, only having that one little issue on, on pit road, you know, we didn't destroy the car or anything. So I thought that was good. All right. So, so at what point in your like racing career did the cup series become like, uh, an actual goal for you? Like the thing you you had in your mind, like oh, that's what I want to do. Like, how old were you when you you like kind of set, set your mind on it? Well, I was only like three or four years old when I was wanting to race, uh, <laughs> you know, in NASCAR, and, and like I was like, man, I want to. So Jeff Gordon was always my idol growing really? up. Okay. Yeah, I was always just really like I don't know if it's the I liked his car, car color or what, you know, having all the different colors and, and all that on his car or what it was but so I really really enjoyed um you know watching Jeff Gordon and I I was told my dad from the time I was three until I was 
five, almost six that I was wanting to race. And we finally got a, a quarter midget um, and started running it uh, down at our, our local racetrack down in Georgia. And so I started when I was six. And basically from the time I sat in a race car for the first time, uh, I, I wanted to be in NASCAR. I wanted to make it to the cup level and, and be – be just like Jeff Gordon was, you know what I mean? And, and, and win races and do all that. So, um, I was wanting to be like that at a very young age. And, you know, as I got a little bit older, when I was like nine, 10 years old, I was, I was trying other things. I was trying basketball, baseball, a little bit of football. Uh, I played, played basketball in middle school, but none of it, like I never loved it enough to, I I like basketball, but I never loved it enough to like really work really, really hard at it. Like I do with racing. So, you know, I, I, I always, if, if we were going to the racetrack versus, or, or let, let's say this, let's say, so when I was playing basketball in like middle school, if there was a race, the same day that a basketball game was going on, I was missing the basketball game. I was going racing. Like, it, it wasn't – and I I had to do running and conditioning when I got back and, and run, you know, down, up and down the court however many times because I missed the basketball game. But it, it was just my priority. And it, and it Wait, finally was, got, was this like your school team, basketball team, or you? Yeah, so – no, so it was like my middle school basketball team. Like, I – like, seventh and eighth grade – and, um, you know, I, I, I just, I just was that passionate about racing that I didn't want to take away from racing just for, for a basketball game. So that happened a couple of times. And uh, oh, oh, I, I imagine think, that, I imagine that's, a, that's a fun, like phone conversation for your parents. Yeah. Yeah. Coach yeah. Uh, Austin's not going to be there today. No, no there, there's a cup race on. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so like, I, you know, I, uh, I, uh, I I had to do some running and things like that. And after the, I think it was my eighth grade year and, and going into uh, a sophomore in high school, I had the option of playing either football or, or basketball. And I kind of was leaning a little towards football at the time. And then I got to looking at their schedule and everything. And I'm like, man, I'm going to miss a lot of games or races, one of the two. Mm-hmm. And I just, I just said, you know what, I'm done. Like, I'm not even going to try to do two different sports. And and that's when I, I guess I, like, really um, stuck to it when I was, like, 13 years old or so. I, I was, like, completely done with all other sports, and, and it was 110% uh, all about racing. So I uh, – I definitely wouldn't trade it for, for anything. It was it was something that I've always wanted to do, and, and it kind of got me to where I'm at. So have you have you got to meet Jeff Gordon yet? I have, yeah. I've actually met him uh, a, a good amount of times. He probably doesn't even know that, that I'm a huge <laughs> fan of his or anything like that. So he, he probably doesn't know that I'm a huge fan. I just, you know, when I was racing in the – I met him when I was little. I, I used to go to the racetrack and have a uh, a full blown like race suit that was decked out exactly like his, like Dupont and all on it. So I was I would be decked out, and I, I got his autograph at a young age and everything. And um, as I got older, like when I got the NASCAR Can In series, I saw him at a handful of races. I think Bristol was one of them, probably one of the last times I had seen him. Um, and, and got to talk to him for, you know, five or 10 minutes and just asked him some questions about racing and what to do in certain situations, things like that. And, and, and he gave me advice and, and all that. So uh, that was really cool to, to do that just because, you know, he has been my idol ever since I was little and still is, even though he's not racing anymore. Well, well you need to, hopefully you have a photo of yourself in, oh, in we do. Jeff, Jeff Gordon fire suit. So you can, you need to carry, carry it around with you just in case you run into Jeff. Say, hey, yeah. <laughs> look, yeah. this is me. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I need to do that. That'd be funny. <laughs> so, so at what point did, did be- becoming a cup driver become like a tangible thing for you? Like th- this might actually happen someday. Well, when I, when you're younger, you know, all you're thinking is, 
I just got to go out there and outrun everybody else and win races and, and you'll make it. And I learned at a pretty young age that it took sponsorship dollars and it took a lot of other things other than just being a good race car driver and, and winning races. So, um, you know, I, I'd say when I was like 12, 10 to 12 years old, I was like, man, this, you know, I'm, I'm going to do this, uh, 13, 14 years old. I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going to do this. I'm going to go to the cup level. Then it got to when I was like 16 to 18, where I was like, well, this, this is a lot harder than I thought it was going to be <laughs> like making it, you know, making it to the, to the, just to NASCAR in general and making it to say the truck level for that matter. Um, because of how expensive it is and, and how much, how much sponsorship dollars you have to have and partners you have to have backing you and all that. So I almost, I kind of hit the brakes a little bit for a little while where I was like, still wanted to do it. It it was still in my mind, but then I started thinking like, you know, what do we got to do to, to get to the next step? So we really started reaching out to a lot of different sponsors and got to know United Rentals very well. And they're kind of what kind of got me to the level of the K and N level and uh, truck level and things like that. Uh, along with, with my, with my dad and them, they were, they were able to, you know, find some other sponsors here and there that never really went on the car, but it was like B2B stuff that, that he had through his business and all. So, you know, that always seemed to help us a lot, but um, I'd say from the time I was like 16 until I was like, I don't know, 22, I was kind of like up in the air on if it was even going to happen. And then when I finally, when I finally started running in the trucks and I got over to uh, Hattori Racing Enterprises, I was like, all right, we're, we're going to go for it again. You know, I'm going to keep working at this and, and really put a lot of effort into it. And it's just kind of ever since I got over to Hattori Racing Enterprises, it, it that's kind of what I think opened the door for me to finally move up the ranks. And I, I was at the truck level a little longer than I wanted to be. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, I, I'm happy – all those years uh, in the truck series, I thought I learned a lot from the truck. You know, running that that time that that many laps um, races on the truck club, I think it just kind of helped me be a little bit more ready for the Xfinity side. Yeah. So what 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 do you, what did what do your parents do? Uh, so my dad he he owns a steel erection company where you put up all the steel and stuff like in, you know, say big warehouses, like a, like a Amazon places like that, that have like, you know, massive, massive warehouses and things. And he just does all the structural steel. Like he does all the steel work, um, you know, stair uh, steps, stairs, things like that. Um, But he doesn't get into like, you know, fully all he's, all he's there for is just to make sure the, the building's, stay standing <laughs> that's what he does you know what i mean so he just does the steel part and that's it and then other other people and come in and to finish the rest okay so are you so you're a first generation racer yes yeah nobody else in my family raced uh my my grandpa he ran a few times at a at a local dirt track that we had um in Georgia, uh, and I didn't even really know about it, honestly. He did it back when when I wasn't even around. So, okay. uh, right when I right when I started mentioning, you know, going racing, that actually got brought up to me that he ran a handful of times, and hmm. he just did it for fun, and uh, he just did it with some buddies and things like that, and just a, a beat up car. I don't even know what it was, but uh, <laughs> he had a good time at it. Probably like a little street stock or something. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, so so I know um you 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 just came off a of vacation for a week. What 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 you do on vacation with your family? Yeah, we went down to Florida. We went to uh <clears throat> we went down to Legoland in Florida, and uh, first time we had ever been. I never went when I was you know younger or anything. They didn't open it until I think it was like probably been open for like ten years now or something. Uh, from what from what I was told and. But yeah, so you know, we have a six three and a and a six month old. So um you know, we, we had a lot of fun. It, it was perfect for the kids and, and it was something that we definitely will do again. All right. 
So um, Atlanta, getting that win earlier this year, I'm, uh, it was a big deal for you. Um, how old were you when you first raced there? Uh, let me think here. I was probably nine years old, I'd say. No. I ran, I ran uh, Bandolero. I ran in the Bandolero series, and I think it was nine. Um, and I ran in the Bandolero series, and I ran Legend Cars, and I have a ton of laps there around the quarter mile racetrack. And they also used to run a road course inside the track, mm-hmm. um, like where you, or camp the campgrounds and all would be, or the campers and all would be. So we, uh, I have a lot of a lot of memories there won a lot of races there and have a ton of laps. And uh, so I've been running in Atlanta for a long time. So ending back in victory lane on the Xfinity side was, was really, really cool. So how did you celebrate? Uh, I'm guessing there, there's, you're from Winston, Georgia, correct? Yeah, it's Douglasville. I mean, everybody calls it different. So there's Douglasville, Georgia, Winston, Georgia, and then Villarica, Georgia, that are all like, they're all three so close together and we were kind of like it like right in the middle of it so some people say that i'm from douglasville some people say i'm from winston so it's all the same though <laughs> all, right. all right so so i'm guessing b- back home there, there's not a place that has a siren that goes off no we, win, right? no we don't have all that no <laughs> no we leave that for dawsonville <laughs> <laughs> so how did you celebrate like w- once you left the track what, how, what did you guys do well, we brought, we brought the, we have a, my, or my dad has a, a motor home that he lets me uh, use uh, when I need it at certain races. And so we had it down in Atlanta and we had a lot of people there, obviously. So right after the race was over, we went over to the motor home and had some drinks and hung out and, and had a good time doing that. And we honestly, we went back to the house and since it was kind of late by the time we got back, uh, we went to bed um really fairly early i actually went back and watched i went back and watched some of the race um the majority of the race actually uh because i always record all the races and no matter if i win the race or run 30th like i still i still go back and watch it so watch the race and we got up the next morning and we ended up having to drive back home that day so we hung out with the family and, and had a good time and had some people over with you know, some drinks here or there, but uh, nothing, nothing too wild. So for, for you personally, was that the, the biggest win of your career so far? I'd say Daytona and, oh, yeah. and Anna was, was the two. I mean, they're, it's hard to, it's hard to pick one or the other. I, I kind of give the nod a little bit to Atlanta just because of it being from where I was, I grew up at and all the history there and, and all the, laps that i have there from the bandoleras and legend car days but then switching over to daytona i mean it's daytona is a huge deal to win at especially the first race of the year so i think both of them kind of stack up fairly evenly okay all right so you're, you're going to watkins Glen this weekend uh you won there in the trucks last year uh what are your hope hopes and expectations to I guess keep keep your top ten streak alive because you you've just strung together a bunch here lately. Yeah, so Watkins Lynn is by far probably one of my favorite racetracks to go to. Um, I really don't even know why. I just have always been pretty good there uh, for the most part. I've always had a lot of success there in the. K and N series when I ran there. And then when I ran the trucks there, we won there last year. So I have a lot of confidence at, at a place like Watkins Glen. I think it's a place that we can win at. And, um, you know, we've, we've ran really well on the road courses. We kind of had a little bit, a little bit of a hiccup at the Indy road course earlier, uh, a few weeks ago that, um, we were trying some different things and just trying to, just trying to find a little bit more to be that little bit better. And we kind of went backwards. So, uh, we took that back out and we're kind of going a different route now for this weekend, kind of honestly, totally different than what we did the other four road courses we ran. So fingers crossed we're really, really good when we unload and uh, we can, we can have a shot at it to, to put it to, um, you know, all these guys. Well, compare, compare it to other road courses. What, what do you like about Watkins Glen? I like 
the speed of it. Like I like how you have to keep the momentum up. You have to be really good through the S's. Uh, the bus stop is like one of my favorite areas of the racetrack for whatever reason. Um, I, it, it's just, you have to have a car that's working good through the bus spot stop, but there's, there's techniques that you can use as a driver to get through there really well. And uh, I've always felt like I can get through the bus stop pretty good and, and carry a lot of speed through there. Um, the carousel is a, a tricky area of the racetrack where you're really leaning on the left rear tire, left front tire. And um, you got to have it turning really good, but you can't be too free either. And you can't lose, you know, your rear lateral through there. So um, that's a tough little area. And then, you know, just the rest of the racetrack is just so fast and much so momentum based that uh, it just makes it a cool place to race at. So at, in, at Indianapolis, I asked uh, AJ Allmendinger uh, to give it, for, for his assessment of you as a road course racer. Uh, and he, he called you ultimate smooth was how he described you. Uh, what, what do you think of when, when uh, AJ Elmdinger calls you ultimate smooth? <laughs> well, I mean, I think, I guess it's a compliment. I, um, you know, it's, I, I, you know, I think that one of the things that I try to do really well at is, I try to make it to the end of the race and yeah. try to position myself in the right circumstances and a right, you know, around the right people. So, you know, it's one of those things that we just are, are really consistent on these, on these road courses and um, hitting your marks and not overdriving the corner, you know, hitting your downshifts and your upshifts and, you know, hitting the curbing the right way and entering the corner the right way and things like that. Um, you have to be really on your game each and every lap. And I, I feel like I do a pretty decent job of that. I, I struggled really bad for whatever reason. I don't, I don't know if it's just because we were, we were struggling with the handling of the car at Indy road course, but, um, you know, the Indy road course it I, it, I struggled really bad there. I, I don't feel like I was ultimate smooth there, at <laughs> least. So, but all the other places, I just feel like I do a pretty good job of like not overdriving the car, not you know, not overdriving my entry and missing my marks and things like that. And and I think that's what kind of maybe give gives him the uh, the impression of me being smooth is like I just I get get what I can out of the car, but I don't push it too hard. All right. So go, going forward this season, uh, wh- how are you feeling about the playoffs I mean, you, you have two wins but they're both on like super speedway races so how, how do you feel about where, where your chances are in playoffs uh i feel good about it but at the same time i mean i feel like we have some work to do in some areas there's different cars that we've been running here and there um you know we 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 have some different chassis and stuff that we've been kind of running that have some different geometry settings and things like that on it that we've been trying and, and, you know, bodies and things like that. So, um, but yeah, I mean, so I, I just think that on the short tracks and, and say the, I feel like the mile and a half were decent, but um, anytime that we go to like a short track, I think that that's one of the areas that we need to be better to, to be, really have a shot at this uh, going into the playoffs. All right. So, we're we're in August. Do you do you have any idea what you'll be doing next year yet? Not a hundred percent. Um, we're working on a lot of things with RCR and just trying to figure out what what we're gonna do. I mean, it all comes down to sponsorship dollars and and having the partners backing you. So um, we're still kind of up in the air on that part. What what kind of feedback did you get from the team after Michigan about your cup start? Like, what was their evaluation? I mean, I, I, they thought that I did a really good job, and I think I was harder on myself than they were on me. Uh, I thought – I mean, they thought – they were like, man, nice job, you know, getting top 20 out of it and, and running all the laps because that was our ultimate goal going into it. And and then I'm over here pleased with it but not satisfied at the same time. All right. Hey, so I guess one of my, one of my last questions for you is, like, what are your hobbies? Like, what, what does Austin Hill like to do for fun when he's not – getting ready for a race or racing so i i mean i have have three kids and a wife that keep me pretty busy <laughs> but uh but like when i'm not when we're not doing stuff with with the kids and the family and all that um I, I i do a lot of golfing i um 
I'm, I'm big into hunting and fishing. So I try to do a lot of fishing, uh, whenever it's not 95 degrees out, you know, if it's 75 degrees out, I'll go fishing. But, uh, and then when hunting season gets here, I'm, I'm in the, uh, what we call the deer woods a lot. So that's kind of what I do. I, I still play basketball, huh. um, with, with some buddies at times and I, I have fun doing that. Um, but other than that, I mean, that's kind of, kind of it for me. I mean, I, I do some eye racing stuff and, um, I, I have a, a PlayStation that I used to play a lot of video games when I was younger. Now I get on maybe once every now and then, but, um, it's not, not like it used to be. Well, I, I put on Twitter, uh, saying, Hey, who, I'm about to interview Austin Hill who has questions for me. And someone asked me, replied to me, Hey, what, like what, what video games is Austin Hill looking forward to? Like, I, I didn't know he was a gamer. <laughs> So yeah, so yeah, so I when I was younger, I um, uh, you know, 14, 15, 16 years old, I was like really big into Call of Duty. I was all about it, you know, playing all the Call of, Call of Duty games that were they were out at the time. I think it was like Black Ops 1, Modern Warfare and things like that. Um so I was I was all into that and and I still get on at times. I have I have two younger brothers that are pretty into gaming. Uh they're pretty heavy into it actually. So um, you know, I end up, I'll, I'll text them if, if the kids go down for bed, say kind of early that night and I'm not wanting to go to bed yet. And I want to stay up for an hour or two, then I'll text them or, or whoever else wants to get on. And, uh, then we, we have some fun. So what's the biggest fish you've caught and what's the biggest deer you've taken down? So I have, uh, the biggest fish I've caught, it was, out of a out of a pond like if, if you if you're thinking like just say a small pond i've caught one about eight or nine pounds but out of a big lake i'd say right now the biggest i've caught is i think right at six pounds okay. um okay. out of like a big big lake and that was down in lake hartwell um down in south carolina so i thought i had a monster on and uh, he was fighting really good uh, as far as deer go the the biggest white tail deer i've taken which when i tell you this like i haven't done a ton of i haven't done a ton of white tail deer hunting outside of say georgia and and like north carolina area um i did go up to illinois one time um and got like a 130 inch deer but but nothing i don't i don't have i don't have nothing too too big on the wall to brag about right now but I am very, very big into hunting. I'm a very avid deer hunter. I just, I need to go start hunting at these, these bigger places like, you know, your, your Illinois, Kentucky, those, those type places, Kansas, and uh, try to get me a big one. All right. Well, uh, th thanks for taking the time out of your, 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 your day to, to talk with me, Austin. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, I appreciate good, it. Good, good luck at Watkins Glen and uh, good, good luck with the construction at your house. Is that yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we, we're actually, uh, we're building a uh, pool at the house. So uh, there's a lot of construction going on right now. <laughs> All right. Well, good good luck with that. So, yeah, I appreciate it. <laughs> All yeah, right, man. Thanks a lot. Have fun, Watkins Glen. Yeah, thanks. Appreciate it.